cookies pie here. Actually, it's an honor to be able to share. So thank you. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. All right, you ready? Yes. Hey, cookies. Hope everybody's doing really well. Um, today, as you can see, I have another beloved special guest who we all know and we all love. Hi, Miss Hatch. Hi. How are you doing? You doing well? I am doing great. We just yeah. got a new puppy, so we're busy with we him. Puppy. He's so cute, and he's a rascal as well. Oh, you got to love a rascal. Oh, yeah, you know, just absolutely. Like <laughs> well, I miss seeing you in line in the cafeteria every day. Um, you always, I always tell people that Sizer Cafeteria is my favorite restaurant in Fitchburg. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> Sometimes it's my favorite meal of the week that's coming out of there. So um, I wanted to um, have you on the show today because you and I were supposed to have plans together this week. Yes, we were. Before um, we had the stay at home order and the plans were really special. Um, so last year, um, you celebrate the holiday Passover. And last Correct. year you had me and my children at your house and we had the Seder meal with you. And it was awesome. Um, and you invited us back this year. Um, so obviously we can't go, but I was wondering if you could maybe talk me through a couple of the dishes that I could make myself. I'd be happy to. Awesome. I, I also, as I was preparing for my own Passover Seder, I thought of your daughter, Lizzie, because she helped me prepare. She did. Yeah. And you know, I think like all of us can relate to whatever the holidays are that our family celebrates. You know, there's something special about those foods and there's something special about preparing it. Um, you know, all my memories of different holidays, helping my mom make things. And so, yeah, you made some great memories with Lizzie that day. Yeah. It was awesome. All right. So um, I'm going to ask you to get me started. And then okay. as we're working, I'm wondering if everybody knows what Passover is. So once we get me working, maybe we can kind of talk about that a little bit. I think that's great. All right. So we are starting with what? So the main meal on Passover is, is not the big deal. It's not like a ham on Christmas and a turkey on Thanksgiving. Okay. What's important are the symbolic um, items that you make. Okay. Um, to help tell the story of Passover. Okay. And so this is a traditional Passover plate um, that I got from my parents. Okay. So today, I don't have a lamb. I wish I did. Lamb is delicious. But um, you're going to walk me through, and can you repeat the name of it again? The Herosit? Harosa, which is one of your family's favorites, and I know that it was something that we all super enjoyed when we were at your house last year. So, what do I need for the Harosa? You need apples. Okay, I got a couple of apples here. Walnuts. Um, a very, very sweet wine, usually the traditional is Manischewitz. It's not something you'd really just want to drink. Okay. Uh, it's very sweet. Oh, sweet. And cinnamon. Cinnamon. Got it. All right. So how, what am I going to, probably, should I start with the apples? Do yeah. I cube so, them? Uh, wash your apples. Mm -hmm. And 
I have a little trick. First of all, I don't take the skins off. Okay. Um, and then just slice around the core of the apple. Okay. Apple. So you don't have to get the core out of there. Just cut four slices around the core. Perfect. I'm going to go rinse them off, okay? Yep. Yes. All right, let me get my Haggadah. By the way, this is another thing I'm willing to share. I often re uh, revise our Haggadah depending on just thoughts and feelings I've had throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So last year, especially in honor of your family, Miss Pav, I redid it. And I thought I proofread it, but when my husband and I were reading it the other night, I found about four typos. So now I'm going back and trying mm -hmm. to find those typos. And you know what? I think I'm going to have to read it out loud because when I read it silently, they don't. That's actually a strategy that I use with the eighth graders sometimes when yep. they're editing. Yep. Um, and it goes to show like you have a published product that you created and you put thought and time into. And I was there and it was excellent. And it matters to you that you got it right. Yeah. And so it's a year later, but you're still revising. I am and like, yep, it's just that important to me. So there was a time a couple thousand years ago that Jewish people were enslaved in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And um, they were finally able to um, break out of slavery. Okay. It's a, but there's, so the history, if we were trying to get a historical document, we wouldn't be able to do that. What we are able to do is capture the essence of the story. Mm -hmm. And the essence of the story is no one thrives at all in slavery. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that we are all free, regardless of our religion, our race, our sexual preference. Um, so. Passover is very important to us as Jewish people because we have been enslaved many, mm -hmm. many times by many different yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, countries and cultures, but we're not yeah. the only ones. No, but you know, the eighth grade, as, as you're sharing even just this little bit of the story, guys, I, I hope you have a billion connections because <laughs> I have a billion connections. First and foremost, you guys learned about the Bill of Rights with Mr. Rossano and talking about these kind of inherent liberties and rights of just being a human being. Um, th those are some of the things that Passover celebrates. Um, also, we read the Diary of Anne Frank, which documents another time in history, a recent time in history, um, where the Jewish people were more than enslaved. Um, you know, there was a, a, an attempted extermination. Right. No. Um, and now we've been talking about Frederick Douglass and the condition oh, of slavery wow. in America. And, you know, we're going to move in my class into um, the experience of the African American after the slaves were released. Um, and I can say that there's a lot of um, connection and there was at the time in um, a slave household to this when, story. So the Jews found themselves in a place called Mitzrayam, which is in Egypt, and initially they lived side by side with their neighbors, but they celebrated their own holidays, their own religious traditions, and eventually the power to be in Mitzrayam felt that they might join up against their enemies. So they made the Jews slaves. Um, and when they finally released themselves from slavery, they had to then go on in their lives and live in freedom, which isn't that easy. If no. you're born into slavery, you don't know how to be free. So one of the things that a, a rabbi once said was, 
it wasn't enough to get the Jews out of Mitzrayim. We then had to get Mitzrayim out of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And I feel, especially for people of color, their ancestry does not go that that far back. Up, there are people brought up in those conditions where they weren't allowed to think for themselves. So how would they? Well, we talk about Frederick Douglass and the efforts that his um, master and mistress made to prevent him from learning to read. Right. You know, you don't want somebody to get those dangerous ideas. And um, again, so if, if you don't have the education and you're suddenly free, even with the education, but without the experience, yeah, lots to think about. It's also how you think about yourself as a person. Um, I mean, when you're abused in any way, um, people tend to think of themselves uh, um, in a negative way as if there's something wrong with them. And so you have to rebuild yourself internally or build yourself for the first time in many cases to be able to say, I belong in this world. I stand in this world. I have as much right as anybody else. And that's not easy. Even in my own life, which, you know, wasn't hard in many ways, there are times when I've had to learn to stand up for myself in relationships, you know, with boyfriends with family members, with bosses. Um, so it, it, it's a tough job. It's almost like the idea, you're, what I'm hearing you say, is like there's slavery like in actuality. And, you know, there are people enslaved in this world today. Yes, yep. there are. Um, and then there's slavery almost as a metaphor for anything that takes away one's liberty in some way. Um, right, that and the, we can connect. Yeah. And what I'd like to add to that is when you are teased or bullied or even feel different, I, I think the biggest thing for me growing up wasn't so much outright anti-Semitism, although there was some of that, but just this feeling of being different. Um, it's sometimes takes a struggle to be able to say, no, I'm not different. I'm mm -hmm. still a human being. I'm still just like everybody else. I'm reminded of Shylock's speech in The Merchant of Venice, which we also read this year. Oh, that oh. because anti-Semitism is prevalent to this day, yeah. there was a time when I went to college when I was just like, I don't want to identify with being Jewish. I don't want to be Jewish because I believed all the stereotypes. Wow. And yeah, and I believe wow. some of the bad stuff that was said. And honestly, it wasn't until I started teaching Sunday school that I educated myself and lost that shame of the lies and the derision that other people had told me about. So one last thing on this topic, I came to realize, first of all, I began to really appreciate the history of the Jews and how much they supported one another and other people. During the civil rights movement, a lot mm -hmm. of Jewish people were involved. Mm -hmm. um, and I, fur further than that, because of the atrocities, because of the Holocaust, I decided not only do I want to identify as being Jewish, it is my duty to identify. People have died for their freedom of religion. Mm -hmm. And I need to carry that forward. Wow. The eighth grade is really gonna resonate, this is gonna resonate with them because um, I know to a person that experience of reading about Anne Frank um, really brought home um, the idea of what you're talking about right now. That, right. you know, the sacrifices that people made. And my apples talked. Okay, how small are they? Oh no, you need them much smaller. Just gather them all up and chop, 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 chop. 
oh my gosh, I feel like I'm cooking with my mom. Why are we not? Oh, you know what? I just said something almost really stupid and silly. I'm like, why are we not doing this together? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I need a beer knife. That's not stupid. Oh, yeah. Coronavirus. <laughs> Duh. I think about a billion times a day all the things I want to be doing with other people. Like this. You can't see, but I'm filming it on my cell phone, so it will be in the video. I mean, massacring the apples. Yep. Because you want to be able to put them on a cracker. You don't want oh. them. Oh, any particular kind of cracker? Oh, yeah. A cracker called matzah. Am I going to make that too? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, all right. These apples are double time diced. Okay. Throw them in a bowl. Uh oh. A little piece of apple fell on the floor, but Buster will get it. In the bowl. All right, so what's next? Chop up your walnuts. I think it's awesome that you're doing this, Miss Pav, because I mean, as you know, I could have given you all the ingredients. Um, or all the finished product because we had our Seder Wednesday, but I think it's really great that you've chosen a couple of recipes and you're, you know, I think it'll have more significance for you. I think you. so too. And, and I love to learn and I love to cook. Um, and I don't know, like if, if I have a friend or somebody from a different culture, um, I, I love learning about their food. I feel like I food, do too. Food tells a story in itself. Yes. Like this literally tells a story. But um, you know, you know whether you're celebrating, um, like we have um, at least one teacher in the building, and probably others who celebrate Diwali. You know, in the winter. Yes. Um, I know we have students who celebrate Ramadan. Um, I know we have all different parts of our community. Um, who maybe come from a different country and we have all these foods that are part of who we are and I, I'm, I'm thankful you're letting me share this part of you Miss Hatch because you're my friend well yes yeah we've been friends for a while I don't know if you uh, your students know that we actually taught together for a while I don't know that they did either yeah before you were um, kind of working fewer hours um, well, you're working just as hard, I know. Um, you were you were teaching with us, and you yes. you and I actually kind of like how um, Miss Domnitzer and I are in the room together. You and I were in the room together. We make quite the team. But yeah. it yeah. just so happens that they needed the co a cook. Yeah. And so. And you're skillful at it. And I said, well, that's a way that I can still be involved in this community. Yeah. And it's just a different way of nurturing the awesome kids that we have. Also, I've been involved in the community since 2007. That's when my son started um, at the school. In eighth grade, by the way. That's right. You're a Sizer parent as well. I am. And I was a board member and a volunteer. So I am very attached. Um, so... You know what? When I retire at the end of this year, I hope you invite me back to my class. Yes, of course. Yay! Because otherwise, I will miss you too much. Yay! Oh, may I put the walnuts in with the apples? Please now? do. Please do. Okay. What's next? Um, I gave you the amount of wine that you need for okay. the amount of apples and walnuts you did, so you. Can you can just pour the wine in. You want this little mason jar back? Only oh, if, if it makes its way back to me, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. How's that sound? Yeah, I have a habit of not returning things. Uh, you yeah, know this. 
Honestly, I have more important things to worry okay. about. All right. <laughs> Poor Miss Leonito. What? Poor Miss Leonito, because I borrow her stuff. And uh, her advisees have to come in and retrieve it. Yeah, well, okay. It happens, though. Um, mix this up a little bit, yes? Yeah, put the cinnamon in. How much? Am I just eyeballing it? Uh, do you have the recipe in front of you? I do not. Not how I roll. All right, I'd put a teaspoon in. All right. I'm gonna eyeball a teaspoon. Eyeball. And then, do you have any honey? I do. Okay, so my little trick for the honey, because it's thick, especially in the winter when it's cooler out, mm -hmm. um, is you put a little bit in the microwave. Okay. Just for a little bit, just to loosen it up. All so right. Mix it in better. All right, I'm going to go do that. I'll be right back. Oh, you know how like when the honey gets. There's a pampered chef tool you need. So I'll tell you about matzah, the crackers that we put on them while she's struggling this with that. Hatch. Can I just put, can I just show you this? Because I have been working um, out. Hot water. Gonna, run it under hot water. No, I'm showing you my cut muscles. Oh, I'm I've been impressed. showing them to everybody because I'm really proud of them. Because I have been working out every day since we've been quarantined. Good for you. Once you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Masterful. All right, I'm going to go microwave this. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, we're going to take a station break, and you guys can see my new puppy. His name is Tim, and he's a sweetie pie. Is that your puppy? That's my puppy. Puppy. Hi, mister. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You want me to Am I just going to pour whatever I'm out in? Looks good. If you feel like he needs to be. Yeah. yeah just remember, um, just a tablespoon probably. Whatever seems like a tablespoon to you. Okay. This is the kind of thing where you can't really do it wrong. No, you exactly. put way too much cinnamon or way too much honey. All right. Should this get covered and go in the fridge? Um, if you're not going to have it right now, yes. For dinner? Yeah. It should get covered and go in the fridge. Good thinking. So the matzo. Yeah, matzo we're going to work on the A big cracker. Okay. And um, so the story goes, when the Jews were trying to leave Mitzrayim, um, it wasn't like a big plan. All of a sudden they could go and they had to go. So they didn't have time to let the bread rise. So they didn't okay. use yeast um, in their bread. And they cooked these, um, most of their food on an open fire, maybe hot stone. stone. You know what we should have done? I should have been, oh, can they see us both at the same time? Mm -hmm. I should have been making some stuff as you were making. It's okay. Making next, some stuff. Next well, time whatever. we have a I in, just, international pandemic, we'll know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so oh I have my. flour. I have, I don't know if I need pepper, but I have salt. Yeah, you need salt. I have somewhere I have olive oil. Yeah, you need olive oil and you need water. I have that. I'm going to grab the recipe because you kind of need the proportions a little bit right You're Baking something like this. Yeah. Why don't you I'll do be that? right back. All, All right. right. So, Matzah, I don't know how much you're making. I don't know. All right. I'm you're going to like it, so I should probably make a full batch. All right. So I know my kids. Two and three quarters of a cup of flour. I think when Lizzie and I did it, we might have tried a couple different recipes. This recipe, I don't know if I like that much, so I might try a new one next year. The key to this is rolling it out very thinly. Okay. And for the purposes 
of this program, I mean, obviously you don't have to roll it all out now because it takes a while. Right. But I'm going to roll some of it out. Definitely. And um, so I thought it would be hard for me to do Passover this year mm -hmm. because I generally have eight to 10 people here. Yeah. Um, so A, I had to pare all my recipes down to two. And um, I also don't have my parents with in this life anymore. Yeah. Um, and I'm still adjusting to that. Yeah. But I said to myself, you need to do this. You will feel better if you do it. You could go down the path of what's the point? It's just my husband and me. I don't wanna. Mm -hmm. But instead I said, no, I want to do this. I need to do it. My husband is more than a willing participant. He takes value from it as well. Yeah. Um, and it helps me feel connected to my parents. Yeah. We, we make these choices on a small scale every day that we're going through this. And what you're talking about is making a choice on a large scale that you're going to keep living. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. All right. So, so I ha have my flour. All right. Half a teaspoon of salt. It says kosher salt, but if you don't have kosher salt, it doesn't matter. Uh, I was going to use the sea salt, which I think is kosher, but that it's, would be harder to measure. It doesn't really matter. It's um, large coarse, which is the main thing. And you're going to need sea salt later anyway. Okay. okay. That's in. And a third a cup of olive oil if you have it, if not some other oil. Okay. Because I'm not even sure how they would have gotten. What are you not sure of? I'm not sure if they had stores of large quantities mm -hmm. of olive oil back then. Did they have a way to press the oil out of the olives? I have no idea. All I can think about is the scene in the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. And I feel like there was a scene where like, he was in a big... Oh, maybe it was making wine, but like they were barefoot. Like I thought yep. it was all, but it might have been wine for wine. Yep, that is how they used to make wine. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a little bit, a lot of bit campy, but um, if, if kids want to see the Passover story, a lot of those movies about it are played around Easter time. Um, because um, for those of you, so we talked about how there are kids who celebrate Passover in our community and other holidays. Um, for those of you who celebrate Easter, Easter is really built around Passover. So if in your yes. faith you talk about the Last Supper um, that Jesus had with his friends, that was a Passover meal. Exactly. Jesus was Jewish. Exactly. So um, it connects to some of you, maybe in ways that you didn't even know. So an, another interesting little fact about Am I just going to put this in? Yeah, you're just going to pick, put it all in. No, I forget to tell you this. I did all mine in a food process. Sir. That's okay. But you don't have to. Just have. Because it crumbles right. it up and then you make it in balls and I completely forgot to tell you that. So I would just stir it up. Well, uh, so just at this point, I'm going to get like a spoon and stir it? Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. So I have, I mean, it, it just basically looks. I keep stirring. Yeah. So what's going to happen after that? Well, then you're going to roll it out really thin. No water? No worries. So if you had a food processor with the motor running, you'd slowly add a half a cup of water. Okay. So just to let you guys know, um, we did not practice this ahead of time. And if this were an official production, we clearly would have needed to have done that. That's not how we roll. Okay. We'll yeah, not now. Not in the middle of a 
plague, basically. Basically. So another thing that we talk about at Passover are the plague. So the Jews wanted to be free from slavery. They wanted to leave Mitzrayim, but the Pharaoh didn't want them to because obviously he liked right, having, he liked your free labor. Right. So um so to try to um prove to the Pharaoh that the Jews had a powerful God, um the God um had a, some plagues happen. Okay. Like created plagues and a plague can be like a pandemic um, right. disease, but it can also be um, just a bunch of negative stuff that right. happens well, all like at you once. Could, you could use the word and say like, um, sometimes I'm plagued by noisy children who interrupt me when I'm trying to teach. That never happens. No. No. Now I can mute them. That's, I don't know. I don't think that's okay. <gasps> Miss Hatch, I waited my whole Isn't teaching it? career to be able to press a mute button. <laughs> I know. Whose side am I on anyway? Um, first of all, when you're Jewish, people don't necessarily know you're Jewish. Right. Do you get to actually hear the anti Semitism? because people are sometimes speaking freely because they don't know you're Jewish. So I've one been with you when that has happened. What was that? I've been with you before when that has happened. You have? Yeah. Oh, we'll talk about okay. but yeah. It actually so what, happened. And you so handled that, it beautifully. When that happens, I try to use it as an educational moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized from something I was reading, and it was in the last five years, um, I, I guess to, before I tell you the story, my point is sometimes we just say things without knowing what they mean. Right. We might call some, we might say, oh, they Jewed me, which means they're mm -hmm. you know, trying yep. to get some sleep or get one over on me. But people don't necessarily know what that means. They maybe they're, don't mean it from an anti-Semitic point of view. Right, it's but... just something they've heard. Yeah. So what I learned is I frequently used the word gypped. I got gypped. I've heard until, that before. Until I found out that comes from gypsies. So mm -hmm. to me, here I am, I grew up Jewish and I understand that what's wrong with saying I've been Jewed and all this time, I've been saying, oh, I got gypped. And now, now you know, and you've learned. I don't want to say that anymore. Okay. I think I have this rolled fairly thin. Oh, wow. So now what oh. you're going to do is um, you can put a little bit of the sea salt on it. Am I going to put it on a cookie sheet? Yeah, but, but yes. But before you do that, you want to take a fork. And just poke little holes all over it. Before I put it on the cookie sheet. Yep. I suppose you could do it after. Uh oh. Gotta go? What? Yeah, dinner just arrived. Wonderful. This is the finished product. So here's the matzo that I made. It kind of tastes like saltines. And then this is the apple salad. So here's what it looks like on the cracker. <laughs> and now comes the moment of truth. <laughs>